In this video, I'm going to show you how we can find partial derivatives of multivariable functions. Let us start with this function f of x and y is given x to the 3 plus x squared y to the 3 minus 2y squared. Let us start with the first partial derivative of this function sub x which means that we want to find the derivative of this function with respect to x and f sub y. Derivative of this function with respect to x is 3x squared plus derivative of this term with respect to x is 2xy to the 3. Note that when we take derivative with respect to x, y to the 3 is a constant, is coefficient for x to the 2. Derivative of x2 is 2x, and so then we have to multiply by the coefficient, which is y to the 3. And derivative of negative 2y squared with respect to x is 0 because we take derivative with respect to x, and when we take derivative with respect to x, everything other than x is a constant, and derivative of any constant is 0. So derivative of negative 2y squared is 0. So this is the partial derivative of this function with respect to x. Let's find f sub y, derivative of this function with respect to y. The derivative of x to the 3 with respect to y is 0 because x to the 3 is a constant when we take the derivative with respect to y. What is the derivative of x to the 2y to the 3 when we take the derivative with respect to y? Because we take the derivative with respect to y, x2 is a constant for y to the 3, and then we have to take the derivative of y to the 3, which is 3y squared. So the derivative of x to y to the 3. With respect to y is 3x2 y2. And finally, the derivative of negative 2y2 is negative 4y. These are the first partial derivatives of this function. Now, we can find the second partial derivatives of this function. But what are the second partial derivatives? If we take the derivative of f sub x, the derivative of the function f with respect to x, again, with respect to x or with respect to y, those are the second derivatives of the function f. So, from this expression, we can take derivative again with respect to x. This is one of the second derivatives, second partial derivatives of this function. So, f sub x x means that we want to take derivative of this original function twice with respect to x. This is the first partial derivative. If we take the derivative of this again with respect to x, we can find f sub xx. But what is f sub xx? We have to take the derivative of this again with respect to x. The derivative of 3x2 is 6x. And the derivative of 2xy to the 3 with respect to x is 2y to the 3. Note that we take derivative with respect to x, so 2 and y to the 3 are constants, and just we take derivative of x, which is 1, and 1 times 2y to the 3 is 2y to the 3. So f sub x, x, which means that second derivative of f with respect to x is 6x plus 2y to the 3. But we can take derivative of this expression with respect to y, and we show that with f sub x y. So this notation means that take derivative of f first with respect to x, which we did here, and then take derivative of that with respect to y. So here we are taking derivative with respect to y, to the variable y. The derivative of 3x squared with respect to y is 0. And the derivative of 2xy to the 3 with respect to y, don't forget. In the, here, in this step, we are taking the derivative with respect to y. The derivative of 2xy to the 3 with respect to y is 6xy squared. 2x is a constant, is coefficient for y to the 3. We bring the power 3 to the front. We multiply 3 by 2. We get 6xy to the 2. And so 6xy to the 2 
6xy to the 2 is f sub xy. Now let's find the other second partial derivatives. We can find derivative of f sub y again with respect to y. Or we can find derivative of this with respect to x. If we take derivative of this with respect to x, then we can find f sub y x. But if we take derivative of this with respect to y again, we can find f sub y y. Let us start with this. So we want to find derivative of this function with respect to x, don't forget. Derivative of 3x squared y to the 2 with respect to x is 6xy squared. When we take the derivative of this expression with respect to x, y to the 2 is a constant. So don't worry about that. Take the derivative of this, 3x2 is 6x, and multiply by the constant y to the 2. And the derivative of negative 4y, when you take the derivative with respect to x, is 0 because we don't have any x. So f sub y x is 6xy to the 2. So note the difference between this and this. Here, we take the derivative with respect to x, then with respect to y. But here, we take the derivative of the function f first with respect to y, then from that, we take the derivative with respect to x. Now let's find f sub y, y which means that take the derivative of f twice with respect to y. The first derivative of this function with respect to y is this expression. Now we have to find derivative of this expression again with respect to y. Derivative of 3x to y2 with respect to y is 6x squared y. Derivative of y to the 2 is 2y multiplied by 3, 6x squared y minus derivative of 4y is for maybe here you notice that f sub xy the partial derivative of f with respect to x then with respect to y equals the partial derivative of f first with respect to y then with respect to x so f sub xy equals f sub yx this is not just a coincidence we can prove that for most of the functions, these two are almost always the same. So f sub x, y, almost for all the functions, but not all for all the functions, but most of the functions. f sub x, y equals f sub y, x. So when you calculate one of these, the value of the other one is almost always the same. And this theorem in calculus is famous to Kellerow's theorem, or sometimes they name it Schwartz theorem. So based on the Kellerow or Schwartz theorem, if f sub x y and f sub y x be continuous, then these two are equal to each other. Because in f sub x y and f sub y x, we take the derivative of f with respect to x and with respect to y, we name these type of derivatives the mixed derivatives. And so, based on the Clairaut's theorem or Schwartz theorem, the mixed derivatives are almost always the same. So, these two derivatives, based on the killer rules theorem or Schwartz theorem, these two derivatives, these two mixed derivatives are the same for most of their functions. Let's do another example. The given function is x squared 
cosine y minus e to the 4x plus ln of y. And we want to find all second partial derivative of this function. First, you have to find the first partial derivatives f sub x and f sub y. Derivative of x squared cosine of y with respect to x is 2x cosine of y. We take the derivative of x2, which is 2x, and we multiply by cosine of y, which is a constant. Derivative of e to the 4x is e to the 4x. Derivative of e to any expression is the same function, but don't forget to multiply by derivative of the exponent. Derivative of 4x is 4. So derivative of e to the 4x is e to the 4x times 4, which I prefer to put 4 here. And derivative of ln of y with respect to x is 0, because we don't have any variable x here, and so it is constant, and the derivative of any constant is 0. Now let's find derivative of this function with respect to y. x2 is constant when we take derivative with respect to y, and derivative of cosine of y is sine of y, negative sine of y. So negative x2 sine of y. Derivative of this middle term is 0 when we take derivative with respect to y. And derivative of ln of y is 1 over y. So these are the first partial derivatives. Now from here we can find the second partial derivatives. f sub xx, f sub xy, f sub yx which these two are almost always the same and f sub y y f sub x x the derivative of this expression again with respect to x is 2 cosine of y derivative of 2x is 2 multiplied by cosine of y minus we have to take the derivative of this expression again with respect to x, which equals 16 e to the power of 4x. Here we want to find the derivative of this expression with respect to y. Derivative of 2x times cosine of y is with respect to y is negative 2x sine of y. 2x is a constant, so we write 2x, and the derivative of cosine of y is negative sine of y. And the derivative of the second term with respect to y is 0, because we don't have any y here. For finding this from this expression, we have to take the derivative of this with respect to x, because again, this notation means first derivative with respect to y, then with respect to x. This is the derivative of f with respect to y. Now we have to take the derivative of this with respect to x. The derivative of the first term is negative 2x sine of y. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and sine of y is a constant. It's coefficient for that. And the derivative of the second term with respect to x is 0, because we don't have any x here. And as you can see, these two are the same. As we expected, based on the Clairaut's theorem, these two should be the same. Now let's find f sub y y derivative of this function with respect to y, which is negative x squared cosine of y plus derivative of one over y is negative one over y squared. For finding derivative of this term, we can write it as y to the negative one and use the power rule which you can get negative 1y to the negative 2, and this is the same as negative 1 over y squared. Another way that you can find derivative of 1 over y is to use the quotient, and you can get the same answer. So these are the second partial derivatives of this function. Let's do one more example. In this question, we want to prove that this function e to the x sine of y is a solution for this 
partial differential equation. We want to prove that this function is a solution for this partial differential equation. The second derivative of f with respect to x plus the second derivative of this function with respect to y is 0. So we want to prove that this function satisfies this equation. This equation is famous to Laplace equation. And when a function satisfies this partial differential equation, we say the function is a harmonic function. To prove that this function is a solution for this equation, we have to find the second partial derivative of this function with respect to x and the second partial derivative of this function with respect to y. And then we have to prove that the sum of them is zero. So first we have to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x. The derivative of this function with respect to x is e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And because we take derivative with respect to x, sine of y here is a constant, is coefficient for e to the x, so we have to just write sine of y. Now if we take derivative of this with respect to x again, we can find the second partial derivative. So this notation is the same as f sub x x. So this notation means take derivative of f twice with respect to x. There is no difference between these two notations. Again, the derivative of this function with respect to x is the same because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x and times it by sine of y. Now let's see what is the partial derivative, the second partial derivative with respect to y. First, we have to find the derivative of the function with respect to y e to the x is a constant when we take derivative with respect to y and the derivative of sine of y is cosine of y. If we take derivative of this again with respect to y, e to the x again is coefficient for cosine of y and the derivative of cosine of y is negative sine of y. Now note that if we add this to this, the sum of them is zero because they are negative of each other. So we prove that the second partial derivative of f with respect to x plus the second partial derivative of f with respect to y is zero. And this shows that this function, the function f, the given function, is a harmonic function. When a function satisfies this partial differential equation, we say the function is a harmonic function. Harmonic functions are important in different fields of physics, especially in heat conduction, fluid flow, and electrical potential. I hope by watching this video, you get a bit familiar with higher partial derivatives of multivariable functions. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.